Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for a special 6.5 Insider Edition. We are talking F1 U.S. Grand Prix and Tech. I am here with my incredible, articulate, intelligent, good-looking co-host, Daniel Newman, co-founder, Brand Puba at Futurum Research. How are you, Daniel? Hey, no worries. Uh, I'm doing really well, Pat, and thanks for all those those kind words. The only one I really cared about was good looking or whatever you said, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll take intelligent too. But yeah, super exciting. It's is it Monday? It is no, it's Tuesday. Yeah. It's Tuesday, Pat. Uh, it's Tuesday, and I'm still coming off the high that is the U.S. Grand Prix, watching cars go really fast and making beautiful sounds. At least if you're a gearhead like I am. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, a straight six can can do this. I think the twin turbos uh, and you know, ten thousand RPMs uh, help. But um, as as we both follow our, you know, it's funny. You're a heavy duty soccer fan. I would say I'm probably a heavy duty NFL fan. Uh, but I think we can all meet here on F1. And and the cool part is that there's a lot of technology that's uh, involved. And the great part is that that means we get invited to two events. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Splunk uh, and Oracle for inviting uh, Daniel and I to the grand event. Uh, but, hey, we were not there just to watch the fast cars go by and watch my team, Red Bull, win. Uh, but we we're also there to have some uh, great conversations. So uh, why don't we start with uh, McLaren uh, and, and Splunk? I mean, we had a... Uh, you know, we started our F1 experience uh, talking to the head of IT uh, for um, Mc uh, Team McLaren, sitting there drinking uh, coffee before we uh, uh, got on the bus, Daniel. And uh, we got some pretty, pretty, pretty big insights. But, you know, there were some uh, special things uh, regarding F1 GP and Splunk uh, and, and McLaren as well. But before we dive in, I am going to I am going to have to. You know, I'm going to have to put this up here. So, Daniel, that is you and I getting on the McLaren Splunk bus. Why Splunk is backwards, I have no idea. This is the magic of Google Photos. But um, this was us roughing it on, on the bus for the two-hour uh, trip in there. But but anyways, I'm going to stop, uh, stop yapping. Let's talk tech. Absolutely, Pat. And just uh, real quick, because I know this is one of our special editions, but I do want to remind everybody the show is for information and entertainment. Don't take anything we say as stock advice. This is not a financial advice. This is us talking tech. This is us talking about some publicly traded companies that are doing super cool things in F1. And Pat, we looked really genuinely happy there. Now, I do have to frame that. Um, this had nothing to do with any of the awesome sponsors and partners like Oracle and Splunk that got us to Coda. But there was a... Uh, long, difficult drive in. I think the logistics, I think somehow after a year off and after, uh, you know, just having such a large event, I think this was the largest Grand Prix event ever for F1. I think I was reading that. Um, 400,000 attendees. 400,000 attendees. Uh, they were struggling with some of the ins and outs. And the road in Dakota is not necessarily conducive of this kind of traffic. You think about this, this is about eight times an average NFL game attendance all coming in and converging on this location. Um, so there's an opportunity for some technology, maybe a little quantum there for some city planning. Just throwing that out there, everybody, in case you are listening to this show. But yeah, Pat, we had the chance. We went over to the proper hotel, one of our favorite spots here, a place that you, if you're ever in Austin, might catch Pat and I on a Friday afternoon uh, tying off the week but uh, we went over there had a chance to meet with the team at mclaren and this was a, a really good conversation now we've worked with splunk for a long time and we've been tracking their their data to everything platform you're talking about a company that's all about observability about you know intelligence and being able to basically take all the data at your disposal and do more with it so you know splunk as a whole it's a very logical partnership for the company and, and they began this partnership actually only about 18 months ago. And so, and the idea was to get behind and utilizing their technology and data to help drive more performance from the F1 team. And so, you know, Splunk, for those less familiar, and I talk about them from time to time, but they do work intimately with, I believe it's 92 out of 
100 of the Fortune 100 companies. So despite the fact that Splunk has not become a household name yet, it is rapidly growing in all that it does. But let's talk about Formula One and where it fits in. So interestingly enough, the McLaren vehicle and basically all the F1 vehicles and driver dependent can go about 300 kilometers per hour. That's 185 um, miles an hour is what they're averaging. They can go faster than that, but that's that's uh, you know that's what they race at. And, and the McLaren vehicle is the MCL 35M. Um, this thing creates a terabyte and a half of data in just a matter of hours. So that basically means all this data is being used by what um, McLaren calls their center um, technology center mission control that's back in the UK. So they have the little booth of technology people that you'll see if you actually watch the track, you see the little booth and all the screens and laptops and inside of the, the pit. But then there's another 30 engineers at mission control. And this data has to get from the vehicle to the, to the, to the compute over, uh, over, you know, the, <laughs> the cloud or over the, you know, the infrastructure, get all the way back to, uh, to the UK it needs to be processed. And they're doing things, Pat, like deciding which set of tires to use throughout the race. And by the way, Lewis Hamilton losing by a fraction could have come down to a data-driven decision about when he pit and which tires to put on for that last, um, you know, that last set of laps that he did, right? Because he got caught in the pit that last time and never was able to catch up. These are those tiny little microcosms of data that these, these folks at Mission Control are looking at. And so these cars now, uh, F1, by the way, these things are so light that a team of about six to eight literally lift these things off the ground and turn them. It's, it was amazing to watch. We've got some video we'll probably put in the show notes. But essentially, um, 300 sensors off these vehicles. And so you have a combination of sensors, data, you got prem infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, you got mission control on location, you got real time data, low latency. And you've got basically decisions that a single tiny fractional decision, like which tire to put on during a pit change could be the difference between someone finishing in first and someone finishing in second. And this week at this amazing race, that pro that was proven to be true. Now, McLaren didn't make it uh, into the into the top three because I believe it was the two Red Bulls and then um, Hamilton right in the middle of the of, of the pack pat. But uh, it was really great to get to know the team. This is a team that's made a ton of progress uh, in the hosting and the whole experience in the paddocks with the McLaren team was great, Pat. So uh, a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. Um, and uh, by the way, Lando, one of their young drivers, very kind of well known in the circuit, Pat, um, you know, kind of known as an esports guy, too. So he's actually not only taking this data off the track, he's actually taking the eSIM and as a, as a, as a, really a training methodology, which is was pretty cool as I heard about it. Yeah, it's interesting. Splunk's doing some interesting data stuff, even with uh, the video game side. You know, it, it, it it's interesting. I'll admit, uh, you know, 15 years ago, I wasn't a huge uh, fan of F1, even though I my, my team had to manage the Ferrari uh, sponsorship at, at, at AMD. But if there's one thing that I learned, and by the way, I'm a total F1 nut right now, but if there's one thing that I learned is that these companies, this is not, none of these are just marketing engagements. So a couple of facts that, that should bring that home. So first and foremost, each team has a fixed operating budget. Okay. So, and if you're, uh, if your uh, tech burns up or you burn up an engine, you, you essentially get docked. Uh, so if you get the wrong technology, you actually have to go back uh, and, and maybe dip into your uh, engine. Um, uh, budget uh, to, to to get the right tech. So that's true for uh, Splunk, and that's true for uh, uh, for for Red Bull and Oracle. So uh, Red Team Red Bull, my team Red Bull did win. Max Verstappen uh, won. It was a total nail biter uh, uh, because uh, Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton was was at the helm, but. Um, uh, Oracle and and Red Bull team Red Bull from a data perspective uh, do things uh, actually quite similarly when it comes to the data and the database. But I think the big new thing uh, that hit at the U.S. Grand Prix was essentially this new application called the Red Bull Racing Paddock. And you know there are there are fans that are crazy 
right? Uh, you know, I would say probably soccer fans are the craziest <laughs> slash football. If you're outside of the United States, they have allegiances. They've got flags. They're throwing bottles sometimes, waving flags. It's crazy. If you've never been to a pro soccer game in Europe, you you have to you have to do it to experience it. Uh, and, and I would say a, a little bit toned down version are our F1 folks. You know, they're popping off smoke uh, that, that's uh, out there. Uh, probably a little bit, maybe a little bit better behaved than NASCAR. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, but just absolute uh, nuts. And essentially, this Red Bull Racing uh, paddock uh, application is a loyalty program uh, that gives dishes up personalized content to the fans and specifically uses Oracle crowd, crowd twist loyalty uh, and, and engagement. So think about the connection between you know, an Oracle and a Red Bull. You just don't make this connection. And it's a fi- you know, it's a five-year deal. So, of course, you would expect it, but uh, imagine the pain uh, after five years if, if it's not uh, connected. So, Oracle Red Bull has to make uh, the right decision uh, on the platform, let's say, versus a sales force or um, uh, something uh, like that. But essentially, there's also gamification, right? The more content you create, the more games you take, the more games you play, the more points you get, uh, and you can redeem all that for merch, okay? Digital, autographed items, uh, and even some potential VIP experiences, which, uh, Daniel, I think you and I both learned. Uh, it is a lot more fun to go uh, uh, VIP, but, you know, I sat in the grandstands for, for a while uh, with, uh, with my son, and it was, uh, it was enjoyable uh, as, as well. So, net, net here, folks, uh, yeah, it, it is quite hot, and it was super hot in Austin. So, uh, net, net, folks, uh, technology and F1 are, have a symbiotic relationship. I mean, Daniel, what, what do you think? There was 25 tech brands uh, out there uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, we, we, wrote, we walked around and just like, hey, there's Citrix. Hey, there's HPE. Hey, there's Cisco. Hey, there's Dell Technologies. I mean, uh, you know, it's funny because I said, I guess NASCAR gets consumer packaged goods. F1 gets uh, tech companies. And then you talked about uh, soccer or as the worldwide would call it football. They, they seem yeah. to get a little bit of both. They get the the airlines and the tech companies, but they also get some of the consumers and, and gambling brands. And Pat, I just want to, I do want to just layer in there. You did make some really great points. Um, You know, Oracle and their OCI had been very on top of uh, using the infrastructure to, you know, enable advanced data analytics in the vehicle. But I like the fact that you brought up the Red Bull Honda partnership with Oracle um, and the customer engagement, because, you know, I actually wrote about this, Pat, earlier in the year. Um, You know, the company is using the Oracle customer experience portfolio including Unity, the CDP, right. including um, CrowdTwist for loyalty and engagement, including responses for their campaign management. And what they've basically been in, trying to do is create this greater access path. You know, as we talk about running to the unit, to the metaverse, right? Yeah. The first thing we need to do is just create ubiquitous access to experiences through our, our, our applications. And so these tools in real time are giving users the opportunity to become closer and more passionate about their sport. Yeah. Great stuff, Daniel. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm really, I'm glad you layered in the OCI piece. And actually I did go to an event uh, on Wednesday at uh, Oracle headquarters where they talked about OCI uh, and, and it's a huge thing. Um, and, you know, it's more than fun and games, you know, bringing your best customers to an event is awesome. And it's even better when you you bring uh, you bring your top analysts uh, out to the track. Uh, but anyways, uh, really appreciated a great learning uh, experience, and looking forward to to it next year. Yeah, buddy, we've got to make it back, uh, whether it's with our partners or, or on our own accord. Uh, the six five racing team, and that's a true false of whether that's going to be a real <laughs> thing. Um, you are here first. We is it, uh, yeah, we, is it not? We, we are going to be at Coda a little more than ever before and possibly testing out just how much data and analytics can drive better driving. So uh, as a couple of passionate racers, Pat, um, it's not just about watching. Sometimes it's about participating, but uh, what, what, what a time, what a weekend, buddy. And by the way, when you told me this was one of the reasons to come live in Austin, 
you weren't kidding, but I'm telling you next year we need uh, any of our, any of our partner client advisory relationships, helicopter, you need a helicopter <laughs> to get me in there because that two hour drive from 15 minutes away was probably the only downside from the whole weekend. There we go. There we go. You heard it here first. Six five racing. Is it real? Is it not? Is it fiction? Is it fact? I don't know, but it sure is fun to talk about Daniel and it would sure be fun to uh, take on that Coda track. I just, I love the curves. I love the hills. It looks like so much fun. I just got to make sure we don't kill ourselves because that would be really bad. That would be a bad way to end this 6.5 podcast. But uh, for everybody who's tuning in for this uh, for this quick, quick hit here, 15 minutes, I just want to thank you for tuning in. And you know where to send the compliments at Patrick Moorhead. And you know where to send all the divisive comments for improvement. That's at Daniel Newman UV. But uh, we care about you and we love you. And we will see you at Friday at 8 a.m. Central for our weekly podcast that you- episode dude hundredth episode and it's gonna be an earnings blast it's gonna be it's gonna be huge we better find a maybe a giveaway maybe not i don't know we'll maybe see a maybe it maybe, maybe a red bull honda race car it'll here we this, go let's ask big. uh yeah yeah it'll be that big anyways thanks everybody for tuning in uh, have a great uh, uh rest of your week